Hello, everyone. Welcome. My name is Cassidy Diamond. I am the Associate Director of Public Programs and Events here at the IDA. Uh, really excited to have you all for this conversation around Netflix's A Cop Movie, moderated by IndieWire's Eric Cohn. Before we get started, I would like to offer a brief land acknowledgement. Um, today, I am coming to you from Chicago, which is on the unceded land of the Potawatomi people who have been stewards of this land for generations. I'd also like to give a shout out to our media sponsor, IndieWire, for helping support the screening series this fall. And as always, you can check us out online at documentary.org slash screening dash series to see all of our upcoming films and conversations. And without any further ado, I'm gonna hand things over to Eric to get us started with our conversation. Welcome, Eric. Hi, thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to do this conversation. Uh, this film is quite remarkable in a lot of ways. We've certainly seen documentaries over the years that have dealt with what it's like to be a police officer with corruption in the police force, but we've never seen one that deals with these subjects the way that this one does. It's a truly innovative approach, both in terms of the way that it uses cinema to address these questions, as well as the way in which it allows us to get to know the characters of police officers in addition to the sort of system systemic problems related to their profession. And Alonso Ruiz Palacios is a great filmmaker to look into these issues because as a director of narrative features, he has often sort of looked at these aspects of Mexican society that have to do with social unrest and, and, and the history of the country. So it's quite remarkable to see him apply that to the nonfiction space. So I'm very excited to welcome him, Alonso Ruiz Palacios, as well as the producers of a cop movie, Daniela Alatorre and Elena Fortes. So please join me now. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Uh, so there's, there's so much to talk about here, but Alonso, I think probably the most logical place is just how this idea evolved for you. Obviously, you have uh, you spent a long time working on this, but it, just in terms of the approach that you took working with actors to portray these real life people, how did that um, approach sort of come to fruition for you? Um, well, it, it was uh, uh, um, something that evolved slowly and over, you know, many months. And it was kind of this, the whole approach to this film was very free in that we, uh, Elena, Daniel and I got together um, with the idea of doing a film about uh, uh, something as broad as uh, corruption and impunity. We didn't really didn't know it was gonna end up being about uh, cops. And so we started doing research and talking to specialists in uh, in in public policy and in and in uh, law enforcement and and we little by little gravitated towards the figure of cops and then when we when we um, finally got to them and decided that that we were going to deal with them the problem arose of how are we going to portray all of the little things that they talk about all the little acts of corruption and and you know uh, the relationship to uh, citizens and to their uh, the ones who hire in command things that are very complicated to 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 uh, catch it on camera um, and so we so uh, we knew we had to you know make use of fiction but I I also think that it was one of the the starting points to get together in the first place for uh, Daniela. Elena and myself, like I, I, you know, they they are uh, hardcore documentary people. They they they're both like programmers, and they'd never done fiction, and I'd never done a documentary. So, just the the kind of premise of meeting was already kind of going to bring something uh, interesting about some some sort of research. And I think we we did approach the whole thing like like research, you know, like let's investigate. It, you know, both thematically and formally, like how this movie wants to get made, and 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 everything that evolved was were solutions to to practical problems. 
you know, so the choice of the actors, but then the decision to keep the voices of the of the original policemen um, was uh, something that I think a lot would have been lost if we if if we hadn't heard their story and their voices. So then this idea of doing lip sync came about, uh, and I you know this it, it has been done before this idea of having actors do lip sync to the voices of of uh, real characters. But I, I contest that it hasn't been done quite in this way in, 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 in as much depth as the, 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 these actors did. Um, and, and you know it's all their, the work that they put into it and the amount of preparation. I think there's something when I watch it that to me is, is I mean, it's probably uh, um, bad for me to say it myself, but I, but I, I do still kind of like, um, uh, humbled by their work and, and the, the amount. Of, it's not just a technical representation. It's not just a lip sync like Drunk History or other documentaries that, that we might have seen. But I think they're really embodied. They really became those policemen. And they're doing it with a very uh, tight frame. So uh, that's that's what I like about this movie. Yeah, and it's, I mean, a lot of what you're describing is sort of breaking the, the rules of traditional documentary storytelling or trying things that we wouldn't automatically think as the, the most obvious way in. So Daniela and Elena as the sort of hardcore documentary producers here, uh, what did you make of Alonso trying to sort of break the, the mold a little bit in terms of how to approach this subject matter? Maybe Daniela, you want to go first? Yeah, um, thank you, Eric. Um, I think we were, the, the three of us were interested in, in breaking the mold from the beginning. It wasn't a start point where we wanted to make like a straightforward documentary. Um, that's why also we wanted to work with Alonso. It wasn't like if we reached out to Alonso, he was gonna do a straight doc, right? <laughs> we knew that that was also, as Alonso said, um, a start point that would put us both in a place of coming up with new ideas and kind of learning from the places where we were coming um, and finding creative solutions to things that we, you know, met uh, throughout the way. Um, and yeah, I, I think that's that's pretty much it. it it's also, um, I think it also gave us uh, a possibility, just looking for, for these, kind of different form to talk about a subject matter that we knew that was complicated, uh, was also coming from many conversations that maybe Elena and I and also Alonso had have um, around form and around the possibilities of uh, narrative exploration to talk about social issues, which is, you know, it, it's, it's great to have a film that makes you, um, angry but it's also fun and it also makes you laugh and it kind of takes you on this journey that mirrors our own journey as filmmakers producers creators i think we had that journey and it's it's incredible that alonso really um looked to mirror that journey that the actors were in the plays avatars of whoever was looking at the film and, and just pushing for their own experience of the social issue, but in a completely different way. Hmm. Elena? Uh, you have to unmute. Oh, there you are. Daniela and I had a conversation before this where we were asked, like, what were we looking for, you know, when we started uh, No Ficción? And, and we talked a lot about being uncomfortable and also what Walter Merch called like the enforced idleness. So forcing ourselves to be in kind of this uncomfortable enforced idleness, becoming kind of a starting point for a creative challenge. And I think that was kind of the beginning of this journey. And, and as Daniela said, the entire journey of the film for all of us involved um, was meant to kind of immerse all of us in that police universe and hopefully you know, kind of transform our, our perception of them. And, and we also hope that that is kind of the journey the, that the viewer takes um, through all of these kind of emotional states that uh, Daniela just mentioned. 
Now, Alonso, how, what was the challenge like in terms of the getting the access you needed to, to these subjects from the from the start? I mean, I know you had relationships with the actors and working with actors is something you, you've obviously done before, but in terms of getting the, the police officers that we get to know in this film willing to put some aspect of their lives into it, and what was that process like for you? Now you have to unmute. Sorry, <laughs> um, two years and I still can't can't do it. Uh, um, I would say that uh, it was it was uh, uh, like everything about it was a, a, a learning process. Like you know, I mean, I, I documentary is not completely foreign in that I you know I've done stuff for tv and 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 that and and i've you know interviewed people before and but but it, you know sustaining a whole movie with that was definitely foreign to me <laughs> and and so what, what that entails is a more in-depth uh relationship and knowledge of of the character so i think um yeah I, you, you I mean, I was preparing reading about documentary and, and stuff and, and, and talking to documentary filmmaker friends a little bit on, you know, their processes and what questions to ask and how do you, how do you get the, the subject to trust you. But at the end, nothing, you have, it's, it's a path that you have to learn the hard way, you know, doing it yourself. And, and, and I think that, I mean, I would say the first thing is that when we found Teresa Montoya among many cops, you know, we, we interviewed many cops as options to, to be the characters in this film. And then when we landed on Teresa Montoya, we instantly knew that it was them, you know, because, because of the way they, they tell their stories, you know, it's so, it's funny and tragic at the same time. And, uh, uh, you know, they're very smart people and, um, and but very importantly, they want to tell their story, and 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 I think you can't make a documentary if the other person isn't playing the same game that you are. If if the other or at least this kind of documentary, maybe you can do something political where you chase um, politicians who don't want to comment or whatever, you know. But this type of very candid documentary that is, you know, that is very much biographical. Um, the only way to do it is to is to uh, establish trust between you and the uh, and the characters and and so um, I actually still have a problem with viewing them as characters. Um, Daniela and and Elena are more used to to say, oh, the characters in this documentary. And I was like, well, they're not characters; they're they're people, you know. Um, but sometimes it helps to 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 make that switch so you can make practical decisions of what to edit, what to leave out, what, you know, but you always have to, um, I think it starts from, from a mutual trust and from listening to what they want to tell as well, how they want the movie to be. And the, it's, it's a dialogue, it's a, it's a collaboration, I think. Um, uh, and and that Daniela and Elena, I'm curious about from a producing standpoint, what sort of challenges you saw in terms of getting police officers involved and navigating the access necessary to tell a story like this, given that it is obviously a hot button subject matter. I think it started off with being very sincere with just the overall intention. It's a project that was born as a film, but also as an impact campaign from the beginning with the intention of creating a new conversation specifically around the relationship of uh, Mexican citizens with uh, po the police. Um, and just sharing that with, you know, the police academies, the, the NESA police, like all these, you know, different uh, police forces that collaborated um, was very helpful in gaining access, but also in terms of the relationship with Teresa and Montoya, you know, they were, they, they wanted to tell their story and, and you know, it matched with our intention to, to to create that new conversation. So I think I think that was kind of the starting point and, and, and the basis for 
for gaining all the access that we needed both for the actors in the academies where the directors knew but the cadets didn't that they were actors um and also in in the patrolling and it's also something that you know we've talked about before but probably it's something that we could never do in the US, <laughs> um, it would be illegal. Uh, and here, um, you know, we, we have a very, a very robust uh, legal team behind. Uh, but it was, you know, we, we could actually gain that access uh, in terms of having the actors patrol with actual policemen um, in the streets. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that I think is fascinating about that is that you, you get to know their personalities quite well before you even get to the point where there's any sense of real complications in the force. I mean, it almost seems like a, a kind of a nice place to work for a large part of the movie. So Alonso, can you talk a bit about kind of structuring the narrative? Because there's a few different twists in the film, but the first one that really, I think, makes you jump up is when you realize that you've got the you know, a married couple working together and seemingly kind of enjoying that, you know, dynamic. Yeah, well, I mean, the first thing I'd like, I mean, it's funny that that you, <laughs> it's interesting that, that, that you, that you uh, describe it as, uh, as enjoyable, but I guess that's, that's kind of right in, in some sense in that it, there's a lot of normalization of, of really, uh, really strange things going on in in their daily lives you know stuff that they have to do they have to pay for they have to pay for every little thing you know if, if they want a clean vest and they they talk about that all throughout the movie right that all this all the little bribes that go on within the corporation not just within citizens and policemen but but inside the corporation but yeah they're it's so normalized they're so used to it that it kind of at, at, at one point it doesn't affect them and it's just they ha they get on with their job. So yeah, there. I think I, I did. That was one of the uh, things that we wanted to play with. That it seemed normal. You know, you you look at this, but then you you think back on it. And you think, wait, was he? Did he just give him money for that? And it's so everything is so normal. And there's a lot of I I we shot very deliberately all the exchanges of money in a very kind of Bressonian way. You know, I I, I um I had this. Uh, Bresson movie L'Argent uh, in my in mine and all the all the little inserts of of money are the, it's there it's the it's it's the survival the, the basic survival tool, um, but in, in terms of structure, um, yeah, it, it, it was a, a, a little bit uh, of a puzzle this this movie to I, I co-wrote it with um, a good friend who's a, a playwright and we we both like to play around with structure and to and to find uh not to one of the premises that we have was not to give everything away at once like to for it we did we always we're, we're particularly drawn to to narratives that are like russian dolls you know that are that aren't uh, you don't know exactly where it's going from the start some people don't like that and some audiences resent that but uh you know, so there's there's a price to pay. You will lose some people, but hopefully you will you will gain um, other viewers who, who who don't like things to be explained or or be so clear from the start. And this this was one of the premises. We we wanted it to be a journey of discovery, and you know, for there to be little surprises. So that we we landed eventually on this five act structure um, where you see Teresa first. Then you see Montoya. Then you see them together, and the, this was also part of their life. You know, I mean, they're the, why we chose Teresa and Montoya because they are a couple. Because there's a love story in the middle of this um, very uh, harsh environment. Yeah, having a, a love story was a great sort of contrast to work against. Um, <laughs> Well, and then off of that, I also wanted to ask you about the the other kind of twist in the film, which is that it becomes a very different kind of movie halfway through as we see these actors sort of contending with the challenge at hand. So maybe you start with like sort of a Bressonian place, but you wind up more in like Godard territory by the, by the yeah. second half. So can you explain a little bit about uh, that decision and sort of the way that it emerged from the production process? Yeah, I think I mean the this um, idea to have to follow the the actors 
was something that emerged quite soon when we decided we were going to use actors to play Teresa Montoya. Then the idea evolved naturally to, okay, let's let's record their their um, acting process and to see how they become policemen because that will let us see as viewers what it takes to be a policeman in Mexico. That'll be our our way in. So we knew that we wanted that to be a part of the movie. And then there was a big risk. I honestly, I, there was a point where I wasn't sure it was going to work. Um, like opening up in the middle of the film, this new whole other film that isn't about the our main characters anymore, but it's about the actors as characters, as, as people. Um, and then going back to Teresa Montoya. It was a, a, it's a long detour. It's like almost a half hour detour. So it's a big ask of the audience to like say, okay, well, we're going to leave this story here. And we're going to tell you this other story about how they become cops and not, you know, all that they feel about that in another language and then go back to it. So it was, that was very much something that we played around in the editing, but the, the bet was there from, from the, when we were writing the script, like we, we, that was one of the first script ideas that, that I had and how, how much we could get away with was something that we, we, um, we we edited a lot, you know. We tried shorter versions, longer versions, um, and, and and until I think the, what we have now is a, is a fine balance that yeah does it does go off on a on a really long tangent, but it comes back and it and hopefully you know it it it, it hits home again. Um, and Daniela and and Elena, what, what did you make of this sort of evolution? of the project in the sense that, you know, you knew that this was supposed to be about a, a very important subject, but it also had a, a kind of an, another layer of it that was about sort of self-reflection on the part of the actors. So what was the process like on your end in terms of figuring out how that fit into the practical needs of the production? I, I was gonna say that I, I, I love for Alonso to describe the process of this film as a, as a, as a research throughout the whole process. Um, because, um, you, you know, I kept thinking like when Alonso invited these actors and these actor, um, he didn't show the script. It was like, you have to say yes to a project with certain guidelines, but there's like these process of immersion. And then when he gave them the script, he didn't let them see the real interviews uh, or the faces. Then when he gave the audio, it was only the audio, but not the, the faces. So like just kind of pushing the limits um, of process at the service of pushing the limits of, uh, you know, fiction patience. and documentary. Limits um, of patience. <laughs> and, and patience and pushing the limits of patience. But, you know, I keep, I keep thinking of all the places where some of, some of the places are very obvious in, in where Alonso pushes the boundaries of, of uh, fiction and, and documentary. But there's others that are places that maybe you don't realize. Like I, I go through the film and it, like, you know, the first siren, it's, it's a human voice. And that's like pushing the boundaries of fiction and nonfiction. Um, the, you know, maybe we didn't have enough funding to have like all the extras we wanted. So then Alonso's like, well, in theater, there's a troupe of like actors and actresses that play different roles. So why don't we have a troupe? And then you can, you know, the, the woman who, uh, gives birth at the beginning is the same one that you see like a sequence um, at the store and, and, and these actors are just playing different roles. Um, and there's just so, so many different moments that I, that I think that are um, more subtle, like the, those, you know, ch radical changes throughout the movie um, that, that are really part of the research. And, and I, I really like thinking of the process of making these film also as a mirror um, in terms of looking for, for a different narrative and a different structure. Elena, anything to add there? No, I mean, I just would say that definitely restrictive uh, or restrictions to funding are always an opportunity as well to find creative solutions uh, that we did. And also, I think it was just being patient, being open and alert and clever in the way we use, you know, certain 
situations in the benefit of the film like you know the the the, the parade was originally a stadium that we were never going to get access to or be able to pay for so um gay pride was happening that 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 weekend so we just decided to shoot there you know <laughs> take advantage of that situation and then there were some uh great moments like the 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 guy walking up to the other uh, guy peeing and you know saying this you know in the u.s you would probably you know they, they'd kill you for this and he was just a guy walking by he wasn't part of the film at all so i think all those unexpected situations um that were part of the process were also kind of a learning experience for future productions on our behalf no? i'm also curious about the uh way that this project fit into the broader tradition of documentary theater in mexico and alonso maybe you can talk a bit about that some people who so the film may not be familiar with kind of the history of that in the country. Yeah, there's so there's there's um there's such a thing as documentary theater, <laughs> and it's a it's a, a, a something that a, a wave that caught uh, quite a quite a lot of traction. A couple, I mean, I would say it's now it's like more than it's like 10, 15 years ago it started becoming a thing. Um, it probably came from Argentina. There's there's some great uh, documentary theater people there, and and then it's also it's also occurring in in um, in Germany. But I think in Mexico we we got it really strong from from Germany, and and so I have a bunch of friends who work that we've done. I have a theater group, a little theater group in Mexico, and we've done a little bit of that. And actually the one of the main ideas of a cop movie came from from uh, a kind of a challenge that I, I have this friend uh, called Lazaro Gabino, who who's um, a theater director, and we we exchange ideas a lot and are often you know kind of uh, uh, pissing each other off and and uh, and challenging each other and um and and he had a play called Tijuana, which was it was his his um, diary of going to, to, to live in Tijuana with the minimum wage and recording his experiences that for six months, like, and, 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 the, and the play is just like a performance of, of his diary in, uh, living, what it takes to live with minimum wage and the amount of what things he could buy, what things he couldn't, the, the, what, how he restricted himself and like all, all, all of that stuff. Um, all, all to prove, obviously, that it's untenable. You know that you can't. And then I went to see his play. I said, I think it's great. Blah blah blah. And then, and then he told me, well, it's all bullshit. I never, I never did that. And he convinced us all that he went and and put himself through that. Um, he never did. And and said, and so I said, well, we're going to do the same, but we're actually going to do it. Like we're actually going to put the actors through that process of of immersion. And uh, and 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 you know, I I yeah we we found these very these two very brave actors who 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 immersed themselves in the in the police force and and who were willing to record that and and go through their experience and so it's it's yeah I I, I think that's how the the, the theater uh, documentary theater fed fed off into the movie. Yeah, and, and what's fascinating about it is that it's also using that as a platform in much the same way that a lot of more traditional social issue documentaries have, you know, sort of taking more conventional forms to explore this subject. And so I wanted to return to the idea of impact, which um, some, some of you mentioned earlier. Um, Daniela and Elena, maybe just to, to start things off, I think it would be worth talking about you know, what do you see as sort of the ideal impact of a movie like this in terms of the way that it addresses uh, policing in, in Mexico? Who wants to go first? <laughs> I mean, one thing we, we were certain is that we did not want to have a film that would tell people what to think or what to do or where to sign or what to support, you know, um, because um, we wanted that also the campaign to mirror kind of this open process of the of the filmmaking itself. 
Um, we also knew, you know, it, 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 could be problematic because the context is very different in other places where we've showed the film, but we were hopeful that it would, it would also lead to new conversations there. Um, so we're actually very curious to see reactions in the US, I mean, um, uh, to this film and in, in just other contexts where the film has played. Um, but it was, I mean, I think our, our main goal was, you know, if the viewer has, is, is, has a different perception of the police or thinks about them in a different way at the end of the film, you know, that was kind of our intention because that in a way is, is a starting point um, for everything else that could happen in terms of impact, whether it's changing, you know, attitudes, behavior, the behaviors, the institution, the community, how we relate to the police and, it, you know, or how we understand the system. Um, so that for us was, I think, the main objective. And then, you know, the campaign is, that is the driving force for the campaign that we're working now with, you know, different organizations. Yeah. Um, but also with the police themselves, you know, I think that's, um, it, it's it's working on many different levels, but I, we're also finding kind of creative ways to carry out the campaign and not the traditional impact campaign like 101 uh, manual. So I think I, I think it's a driving force for 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 the process of the campaign as well and how we design it. I was also going to add that um, throughout the process of making the film, we also had conversations with people that we respected trying to come up with ideas of how could we have a, a social impact campaign that would be unusual as the film is unusual. Um, and, and thinking in, about um, all the discussions between experts for so many uh, years and decades about different solutions um, to reform the police or defund the police, you know, the, these, um, these, these responses, these answers have been throughout the, the, the time. Um, and, and maybe our intention was not to try to find the specific solution, but try to um, force um, breaking preconceptions from the perspective of whoever was watching the film. Um, it could be the audience, but it could be police officers. It could be students. We wanna, we wanna have screenings in police academies because we realize mm -hmm. that a lot of the police officers, when they're students, they do have a dream. They do believe deeply, some of them at least. I mean, obviously a lot of it comes from need, um, but there is also, um, some 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 ideals of what they can do to change you know their country in, in some places um so we were thinking how do we tap into breaking preconceptions in a way that the conversations that could go back to those solutions that we're not going to put on the table but they're there maybe we come up with a different conversation maybe we we find a place from which sparking um a different conversation in what happened um, at certain moment that we just couldn't look at each other anymore, you know, police and, and citizens. And we know that the situations in different parts of the world is completely different. But what we do know is that the relationship between police and citizens is broken everywhere in the world. And we don't you know, we don't necessarily know why, but maybe if we spark a conversation about why, then other agents can come and try to push, you know, possibility solutions, but this conversation might be a start point. It's, it's not gonna give answers, but we didn't wanna give answers from the beginning. Well, Alonso, I wanna put that same question to you. I mean, what, what sort of systemic issues do you feel like you, you came to understood through making this film and what kind of changes do you think could be sort of contributed to by its existence? Um, I mean, again, I would start by saying that I, I don't believe that a movie can can change anything. <laughs> I really don't. I think I think a movie is, and it's not meant to. I mean, I, and I think that's what's great about them. They're they're not political tools, even though people try to convince themselves that they are. Um, they they aren't for me. But but I do think that 
one thing that film can do like no other medium is is to make you uh participate in a journey of empathy you know uh, in, in in a it can create empathy like nothing else you know just just in that for two hours you can experience the lives of Teresa Montoya and see what they're up against I think changes your your perspective a little bit you know at least it makes you shift and look twice and think I, and, I, and I think that is all we can aspire to just um, to have that little shift in perspective for the duration of the movie that'll pro hopefully make, make you you know, maybe just plant a little seed. Um, but, oh, fuck, I forgot. The, the, what was the other question? Um, well, just in terms of the, the potential impact of the movie, um, I think you basically addressed it. But yeah. also, what, what, you know, what surprised you about... Oh, yeah, yeah. That, that I think every uh, everything was a, a constant... By the time we came to film, we, we, we knew a lot of what we were going to find because we'd spent almost two years researching and talking to policemen and uh, academics who specialize in, in, in uh, the police force. And, um, and so we, the, the, like the big shocks came before when like we couldn't believe that they had to pay for their own gear, the, you know, a, a lot of that stuff. But, but I think one thing that I take away that is very, that still bugs me and it's, it's still, uh, I'm, I still am surprised by is the amount of racism that exists. And it's very different the way that racism, I think, um, uh, is, is um, lived in, by, in, in, in America and, and in Mexico. I think in, in America from what we can, we've seen and heard and talked to people when now that we've been screening the film over there um the, there's a systemic racism that is perpetrated by cops to uh, other communities right and, but in mexico it's the reverse almost it's it most policemen and women come from indigenous backgrounds and so the average citizen uh it, it uh, manifests a very strong racism towards cops that is you know they're treated like servants like the servants of the people so it's they really they have a lot of it's an upward uphill climb for for policemen and 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 that just happens on a daily basis like all the stories that we heard from cops i think had at the root a very strong racism mexico is a very racist country that hasn't hasn't come to terms with it, hasn't addressed it, hasn't spoken enough about it. Um, and, and, and it's something that's very, very much ingrained in, in, in Mexican people. Elena, you wanted to add something? Yeah, I was just gonna uh, just exp express that I, I disagree with something Alonso said that because I think that this actual journey or humanizing or empathy uh, journey is already changing something. Um, so I do think in that sense, films do change <laughs> or do affect change. Um, but I also wanted to say that, uh, and we, we were also having this conversation, we need more films that humanize perpetrators uh, or, you know, the enemy or uh, just because they create more complex conversations that we need to have, especially now that we are living a very polarizing moment and also just a polarizing context in terms of how we relate to each other virtually, you know, especially during the pandemic. So that was what I wanted to add. Yeah, thank, thank you for adding that. It's a very important point. And I think also one that helps bring us back to perhaps the one area that uh, a lot of viewers will have on their mind uh, when they watch this. And, and it's a good note to close on, which is how are Teresa and Montoya doing these days? And what do they think of the film? Lani, Kirith, do you want to answer that? Go for it. <laughs> um... I mean, Teresa and Montoya are now not part of the institution anymore. They, they decided to leave. Um, I think 
and we know that it was a complicated decision. Uh, you know, Teresa always says that her blood is blue, you know, because she, it also comes, um, telling the story comes obviously from the need of telling their story, but also from their own love and, and belonging to the, to the institution and seeing that frustration from the, from the inside. Um, and how do they feel about the movie? Um, I think they, they have had different moments. Uh, there's always, you know, we're, we're, we're telling their story. It's a very intimate thing. There's actors um, owning, embodying um, their lives. And, and so there is a lot of um, licenses in, you know, with the, with the fictionalizing of their stories, but it's also portraying a very part of the, their life that had been private for so many years. So obviously seeing yourself exposed in that way is intimidating. Um, but I also feel like they still believe that they did it in the first place, coming from the best place, coming from a real interest in telling the story, but not only the story, but the story of a lot of police officers that they've you know, related to throughout their many years, Alonso always says that when he met Teresa Montoya, um, there were, you know, 33 uh, or 34, and they, it almost looked like they had like four lives, you know, their, their lives are so rich and they've experienced so, so much, just like knowing that there's still um, something in their story that might call attention to a group that has never been seen at least in the way that we're trying uh, through these movie. It also happened when we showed the film in Nessa with the, you know, um, police officers, but also like the, the directors of, of the police in Nessa. Just, there's a lot of complexities, but it, they're not complexities that they don't know about. It's just finding the people that are open about them. Um, but it's a group of maybe that they will feel seen um, in, a, in a way that they've never, felt it before. Yeah, there's there's some there's some a lot of interesting elements there that that um for example we we used I mean that I think kind of embody the spirit of the film within like a single gesture like what the whole film is. For example, when Teresa when when Monica is reading the letter that her father gave her when she finally graduated of the police academy and got her first job patrolling um, she, there's a moment in the film where she's reading that letter that's, you know, a heartfelt letter and a long time coming, that kind of reconciliation between father and daughter. And, and she's reading it, she cracks up and, and Monica, she's doing the lip sync and she has to cry in sync. So it's like the actress doing the emotion, like go, really going through the emotions, but in a very, very tight framework. And then we see, we get a shot of, of what she's reading, and and it, that's the real letter that that Teresa gave us to shoot in the movie. Or, for example, when you see them uh, interviewed together, behind you can you see a, a, the picture of a little kid with a police uniform, and that's Teresa's kid when he was little. Or, or in the fridge, you see uh, Mon the real Montoya. He takes a Raúl takes a picture, and it's Montoya with his kid. So it's like full of these little things that kind of merge reality and, and, and fiction, you know, and, and so it, it, they helped us to keep it grounded. And so when they see, when, when they see it, it also, I think is a bit, they, they've, I mean, Teresa said last time to me, she came to San Sebastian to see it. And she was like, I, you've shown me my own life in a way that I, she said, I, she said something like that. She's, she's very articulate. Um, <laughs> you know, in a way that I had, that, that I hadn't been able to see it. Um, so it's very, yeah, it's very powerful. I think what, what films can do w with real subjects, you know? It sounds like this story is, is still ongoing. Do you foresee a cop movie too in the future? <laughs> uh, not really. We've been, we've been asked that, but I mean, I don't know. You never know, but but um, I, I like to move on. I, I think you, you can't jump in the same river twice, you know. 
<laughs> well, on that note, thank you all for being here. Congrats on this film and, and this wonderful conversation. There's so much to explore here. So thanks again. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Bye, Diego.